Take this one out. And now, listen to this. So have you ever wondered why the second one sound fatter? I will fix a thin mix and make it fat in Six. five minutes. But you see, this video is longer than Six. five minutes, and you may wonder why. Because the question of why is always more important than the question of how. Not only in music production, but oftentimes even in life itself. Why is fascinating? Why is cool? Why is sexy? So we will have teeny tiny theory parts in each section to answer the question of why. And then you will see how on evolve. But if you want to avoid why, I edit the chapters below so you can jump in between different sections. Tilted frequency response. This is the most common problem with the tin mixes. Let's say we have an imaginary mix and everything looks like this. And let's say everything is super balanced. But maybe we want a brighter mix so we add a little bit more high end. Of course, this is a personal preference and there's nothing wrong with this. But what happens if we boost the high end a bit more? Now we have much more unbalanced mix and when this happens, things start to sound more and more thin. Take a listen to this. This is the definition of thin mix. The first thing is the tilt. Take a look at the master over here. For a more balanced melodic techno track, you will see actually this part and this part in the similar range. But here, we are topping pretty much, so it's quite tilted. To fix the tilted mix, just the volume adjustment should get you quite far. I'm gonna start with the hats. And then I see this one is a bit too bright. Look how much we were able to even the things out. One of the biggest mistakes is like high passing everything in your track. In the pads, we are high passing all the way to 500k. Take a listen how warm it sounds when I push this back. Right? Warms the mix up. Do you feel it? Let's do the same thing with the horns. The master. You change so fast. Dynamic range. The dynamic range is defined by the quietest point of the sound to the loudest point of the sound. But now if you take a look at this sound over here, the dynamic range is exactly the same. But obviously these two sounds won't be sounding the same simply because of the duration and how much the sound is sustained on the loud part of the sound. Hence, if you have all of these type of sounds, very thin, very sharp and very dynamic, it will lead to a very thin sound and mix. One of the easy way to fix this type of sound is just layering it with another fat sound so you still get this pluckiness while keeping the loud point in the bottom. You can also reach similar shape by squashing the sound or clipping the sound. If we increase the volume of this sound now we will have a feather sound compared to what we had before. Let's try this in Ableton. These things are very obvious especially with the percussions. Take a look at the hats over here. These are just nails cutting through. Right? Sometimes you want those dynamics but not with everything. For the example for these high hats I want to have it more body. I'm gonna just switch them to the better ones. Now our hi-hats are thicker. Other very really obvious thing is actually a clap. Again, very sharp one, but this one I really like the sound, but I want to make it a bit feather. Bring in a clipper, shave the top and volume up a little bit. It gets thicker because we push that body a bit up. And we are keeping same loudness level. And look at the immediate change. Another very overlooked problem with the thin mixes is stereo imaging and really overdoing it. In this track, you can clearly hear it. Everything is moving around all the time. It's really confusing. There are things you should be panning around, but not everything. Listen to the hats first. It is fine having moving hats around, especially 16 hats. I like it as well, but the amount is too much here. So let's bring down a little bit. much better. And other thing, like here in the clap. Problems this imager, just all over the place. Take a listen without it. 
We still have it stereo, but it's not that spread. And finally, take a listen to the ARP. Moving around, moving around all the time. Think in the future, when you add delays and reverbs to the sound, it will already add this stereo. I'm gonna just take that pan off as well. Now, listen one more time. Overdoing stuff and pinning everything can be really detrimental for your track. Be really careful. Saturation is another missing thing with the thin mixes. And what better way to explain this with a guitar? I'm going to play exactly the same riff with and without distortion. So let's try with the clean sound. As expected, because we don't have any distortion, it sounds quite thin and weak. Let's see what happens if we add a bit distortion. Much better, isn't it? Even though this is an extreme example, when it comes to music production, there is always a sweet stop with saturation and distortion. So when you think about the saturation, think about, okay, is there a sound that is not rich enough that I can make richer by adding extra saturation? Thing that comes to my mind is actually our hats. Oil rich, but here in the clap, we may get away with distortion here. Sounds nice, but amount is a bit too much. Find the perfect spot. And I'm gonna volume down. Overdrive is introducing also volume increase a little bit. Other thing that could be slightly richer is actually my plugs. All right, I'm gonna go for my favorite again, Arturia. Thank you for making this. Here, let's do it parallel. So I'm gonna keep the original sound being the mix down. Doing it, just getting this 10% extra out of it. Now, the foundation of the track is sounding good. If you're enjoying the video up now, please consider subscribing. The effect of the ambience is pretty huge in real world. Whatever we hear, we always hear the origin sound together with the ambience. If we are sitting in a big hole, then we have the big hole reflections. Look what happens when I hold the bottle like this. I am not letting any air go outside. Hence, we are not hearing any sound that is generated inside the bottle. The only thing that we are hearing really is this initial kick of the sound. It sounds super weak. Take a listen how this sounds when I just barely hold it and hit in the middle. We hear the vibrations and echoes and reverb everything. Let's illustrate this in Ableton. The first thing comes into my mind, of course, percussions. They often need a room. We have a drum played over here. Take a listen. The difference is adding again a bit distortion on top, so that even the reverb is a bit saturated. Tails are a bit longer because of that. <laughs> This is the first step. You want especially your sound to sound bigger. You need an ambience for that. We have a vintage reverb over here. Things that we want to have a bit bigger. The first thing is the plug. We have a long reverb. So what I'm going to do with the side chain so that at least we can have this kick breathing effect on the reverb. comes the final part, of course, a delay. Delays are very important because they can actually make the ambience a bit more hypnotic and then they can also increase your stereo image. Remember what I told you. First, let's fix that for the arm. We are using Fab Filter Timeless 3, but you can really use anything. The reason I'm using this one because I'm modulating Adobe Premiere to create this pitched sound. See how stereo it is. And I'm slightly ducking when the origin sound hits, it keeps the cleaner arm sound. Confusing, kind of sweet spot. And now, listen how everything comes together and track sounds much more fuller and thicker and we have much more depth than we had before. Just with these really small adjustments. about mixing. I have a lot of mixing tutorials over here. Take a look. <laughs>